When you guys start working with radical expressions, it's important that you know what a radical expression is. Radical expression just means it's an expression that has a square root sign. I call it a square rooty sometimes. I don't know why it just comes out of my mouth. It's not an official term. but So the other thing is that the thing that's under the radical sign or under the square rooty is called a radicand. And you'll see that more when we start doing some problems. Okay, so when you're asked to simplify radical expressions, we have a really important property. And here's what it is. If you have the square root of the product AB, that's equal to the product of their individual square roots. Like it's equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. Just be really careful, this is only true as long as A and B are both positive and not zero. Let me show you an example. Like if I have the square root of 10, that's not something that you guys have probably worked with very much. The square root of 10 is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. If you don't trust me, grab yourself a calculator and check it out. The square root of 10 is the decimal 3.16. The square root of 2 is the decimal 1.41. And I'm claiming that 3.16 is equal to 1.41 times whatever the square root of 5 is, 2.23. It's going to be a tiny bit off because I'm rounding, but you guys get the idea. Like this, this decimal times that decimal gives me that answer. And sometimes it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you don't have a calculator handy, but it can be really useful in problems like this, like the square root of 18. I don't know what the square root of 18 is, but I do know that 18 is the equal to the product of 9 times 2. So the simplified form of the square root of 18 would be, let's see, square root of 9 is 3 times square root of 2. This would be my answer in simplified form. Simplified form means there are no perfect factors in the radicand, or no square numbers under the square root e, if that makes more sense to you. So when you're approaching these problems, it's really important that you're good at recognizing perfect square factors. I've gone through and listed all of the perfect squares for the numbers 1 through 15, like 1 times itself is 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4. Pretty much you just have to memorize these, get really comfortable with all the squares of the numbers 1 through 15, so that when you're doing these problems, you can recognize these factors. These are important numbers. One last thing I want to leave you with before you start your homework problems is to watch out for this property. The negative square root of 144 is not the same thing as the square root of negative 144. That's really important. The negative square root of 144 would be negative 12. It's like I square root 144 and then negativize it. As opposed to this, the square root of negative 144, if you try it on your calculator, you'll see it says error. This is no real solution. There's no real number, number, no real solution, no real number. There's no real number that when you multiply by itself, you get the answer negative 144. So watch out for that. Those are two really important distinctions. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 